Okay, this sermon is entitled, Calvinism is what hellbound reprobates intransigently believe. I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 126 reads, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Now the term intransigent means unwilling or refusing to change one's views or to agree about something. That's why I've entitled this, Calvinism is what hellbound reprobates intransigently believe. I'm not saying that all Calvinists are reprobates. I'm saying that the ones that refuse to repent of their Calvinism and this garbage, those are the ones that are reprobates. And you can show them scriptures in the Bible and it won't affect them one bit. So let's take a look at a couple verses and make it clear as to what a reprobate is. Turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's take a look at verses 6 and 7 and it reads, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In verse 8, it talks about these people as being reprobates concerning the faith, and it characterizes them as men of corrupt minds. That's what a reprobate is. A reprobate is somebody who's made up their mind that they're not going to believe the truth. When an unsaved person reads the Bible, they will always come to a fallacious conclusion. For instance, they might believe you can lose your salvation, or that salvation is by works instead of by grace. Well, the same with Calvinists. They can't come to the biblical truth when it comes to salvation as well. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's take a look at verse 14, and it reads, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. When you show a Calvinist that God loves the whole world, John 3:16, and that Jesus died for every single person, these facts are foolishness unto them. They don't get it. They can't grasp it. They can't derive or glean any truth from the scripture that leads them to a correct conclusion. They will always believe their demonic tradition over the Bible. Now, if you've ever met a Calvinist, you will find that these people are hard-hearted, apathetic, unemotive. It's like they suffer from alexithymia. That's either a congenital disorder or it's caused by a neurological condition or a concussion or a TBI. That would be a traumatic brain injury. And this is oftentimes what autistic people have. Alexithymia, or to be alexithymic, is the inability to express emotions. And that's the way the Calvinists are towards the lost. Even their own family members, they don't seem to care about these people at all. They may have a cousin or a spouse or an uncle or an aunt or a grandparent or a niece or a nephew or whatever who's amongst the non-elect. And they don't seem to have any concern about them at all. They say stuff like, well, that's God's decision. If he wants to damn them, that's on him. And who are we to question God? Whatever God does, he's allowed to do that. That's their attitude. And it's pathetic because the Bible tells us that we should have compassion towards the lost, not be indifferent, and just adopt a system where the lost can't be saved. And that's exactly what Calvinism is. Now, when dealing with Calvinists, you will also find that these people are brainwashed. That's why I believe most of them are reprobates. They make Calvinistic quotes as if they're immutable facts. They say stuff like, Jesus died for his own. I was watching this video one time. It was a compilation of these stupid Calvinists out witnessing. And I don't see why they're witnessing. That would be counterintuitive and counterproductive to gospel preaching. But nevertheless, they were out witnessing and they just kept saying, Jesus died for his own. Jesus died for his own. They're quoting that as if it's an actual fact. It's not a theory. It's not their opinion. It's an objective fact. It's kind of like saying water is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, H2O, or E equals MC squared. In other words, energy equals mass 
times the speed of light squared, it's basically asserting that there's an interchangeability and sameness between energy and mass. Well, they quote their doctrine as if it's an unchangeable, universal fact. And that tells you that something's wrong with their brain. Now, why is it so important to understand that Calvinism is what reprobates intransigently believe? Well, number one, because of the danger in Calvinism. Calvinism teaches another Jesus and another gospel. And to be honest, there is no gospel in Calvinism because if God chooses who will be saved and who will be damned, there's no gospel at all. The gospel is good news for the lost. It's not the horrific bad news that the lost can't be saved and they're beyond hope. Number two, Calvinism leads to depression and suicide. Think about it. If you thought that there was no hope for you, you would get depressed. It could ultimately lead to either suicide or suicidal ideations. And if it doesn't, it should. Now, what these stupid Calvinists say is that the unsaved don't care. They're so dead in their sins that they couldn't care less that they're lost. Well, that's not true at all. I have met people that wanted to be saved. They were concerned. They didn't want to go to hell, but then later they changed their mind. Now, that refutes Calvinism because, according to them, that wouldn't happen. God has to regenerate you first, and then you're automatically going to believe. There's no such thing as wanting to be saved and then changing your mind in their system because if you're unsaved, you're too dead to even desire that. But obviously that's not the case because I've met people that wanted to be saved, but then later they were like, no thanks, I don't want it anymore. And they completely changed their mind and became even more wicked. And then finally, Calvinism is worse than lordship. A lordshipper will tell you that you have to repent of your sins to be saved. Or you have to have works to accompany faith in order to be saved. Or you have to surrender your life to Christ and make him Lord over your life. Well, that's a false hope. That's a false gospel. But see, Calvinism is even worse because most Calvinists are teaching lordship and they're teaching work salvation. But even the ones who don't are still giving you a message of no hope. They'll tell you that there's nothing you can do to be saved if you're one of the non-elect. And that's worse than telling people to repent of their sins. And the reason why is because a person may attempt to repent of their sins and try to work their way to heaven, and then they realize it doesn't work, and then eventually they find the real gospel and get saved, whereas in Calvinism, the lost just gives up completely. They just conclude that they're not savable, and they just go on with their life in a state of self-deluded hopelessness. So the conclusion of the matter is this. Calvinism must be rejected in order to believe the true gospel. Jesus had to die for everyone in order for a person to have personal assurance. There's no assurance in a Jesus who might not have died for you. And that's basically it's just crossing your fingers, hoping that something is true. And that's not real assurance. The only hope a Calvinist has is that they first reject Calvinism, and that's what they need to do because it's nothing but demonic heresy and it's completely unbiblical, and then they can get saved the Bible way by trusting in the real Jesus who died for the sins of the whole world and who offers eternal life as a free gift, and it's whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. And here's the acid test. All you have to do is just quote John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The saved person will understand that to mean God loves the whole world, and that once they believe on Christ, they're eternally secure. The Calvinist, on the other hand, and this is how you know they're a reprobate, is when they see that verse and think, well, God doesn't really love the whole world. He just loves the elect, and that only the elect will believe, and that it's forced on them. And then, of course, they have a perversion of eternal security as well. It's called perseverance of the saints. That's when you have to contribute to your salvation by enduring to the end of your life. That's not real salvation. Real salvation takes place instantaneously upon a nanosecond of faith in Christ. And then you're saved and secure forever. 
So if you show a Calvinist the scriptures and he still rejects them and says, no, I'm going to trust my tradition, I'm going to keep believing that God chooses who's going to be saved and who's going to be damned and that God doesn't love everyone and that Jesus didn't die for everyone, that's a reprobate. That's a hellbound reprobate who's intransigent in their belief. And that's why as free grace believers, as true Christians, we need to go to those who have not been given over to a reprobate mind, who have not used their free will and decided to believe this damnable heresy. As hypocritical and ironic as that is, because they don't believe in free will, because as long as people are believing in all this Calvinistic crap, they won't get saved. Because like I've been saying, there's no salvation in Calvinism. All Calvinism does is damn souls to hell, and if a person is saved and they get exposed to Calvinism, it confuses them and upsets them. You won't find a born-again believer who's okay with Calvinism. Every single person who's a Calvinist, who's this dyed in the wool into the system, you'll find they're unsaved, and sadly, most of them are reprobates, because Calvinism is what hell-bound reprobates intransigently believe. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.